So, hello and welcome to yet another edition of Chai and Why. It's Sunday, the first Sunday of the month, where we should have been at Prithvi Theatre, but for November, we are still doing online uh, only mode. Hopefully, once we get back to our regular venues, we will let you know. Today, of course, is a very special session. It's our Diwali special. And our Diwali special has always been something connected to the festival. I'll, I'll explain that in a bit. Now, if you're watching us on YouTube or you're watching us on, on uh, uh, the Zoom webinar, please note that the only way we can get feedback from you and we would love feedback from you is through the chat or question and answer. So please do put your comments and questions and whatever in the chat window. We will try and answer them certainly at the end, but even if it's important, we can even take it in the middle. Now, we do plan to do some experiments today. Uh, you will watch them. And uh, perhaps what you can do is also later on go home and you know try these experiments yourself. But be careful. So before we actually start with all this, I thought I'd give you an introduction to what the session is all about. So allow me to share my screen for a bit. Uh, so let me share screen here. Uh, there we go. Okay, so I hope you can now see my screen. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, welcome, welcome once again. And uh, uh, okay, let's go ahead. So Diwali, of course, is a time where we have, uh, you know, you go to a typical roadside place. They are, of course, selling all kinds of things. There is it's a lot of, it's a colorful place. You will find Diaz. Uh, let me see if I can get my marker. There you go. So you'll find lots of Diaz in different shapes and colors, nicely painted. These days, you often find a lot of what are called tea light candles, pre-filled little metal boxes, which have, uh, uh, you know, wax and a, and a little wick inside them. You also find the good old dias. You find lots of things for making rangoli, etc. And if you're very lucky, you can also find a nice little creature curled up and sleeping peacefully over there. Okay. I hope, but you know, we will be talking about the very, very simple dias. The very simple dias, which are earthen-made dias, and we have a lot of them with us today over here. Uh, we're going to play with them and see what they are all uh, made up of and how their what their properties are, and also. We light them and see what the properties of the of the fire are. So, uh, I hope all of you have had a happy, healthy, safe, and hopefully quiet Diwali as well. Hopefully, wherever you are, the air is not so bad that you're struggling to breathe it. Diwali is, of course, a festival of light, and the Diwali Chai and Wai has always been something connected to light and connected to the festival. And today, we are going to look at the dia. That's what we're going to look at today. Okay, now. Uh, you know, before we start, just remember that there is nothing new in these, these dias. The, the oil lamp, the oil lamp, this has been around for, for at least, at least I would say six, 7,000 years. Okay. And before even people made lamps, the idea that you could burn something to get light before they, they would probably use seashells or they used some rock, which had a little depression in it. So that is like, you know, how tens of thousands of years ago, people had figured it out. And remember that the ability to make light, artificial light, for a long time in the first, you know, maybe a few 10,000 years of humans existence on the earth, people could operate only between sunrise and sunset, maybe a little bit here and there, you know, dawn and dusk. But once there was no sun, well, maybe there's moonlight a little bit, but it really, you can't do much. So artificial light was very important. And fire and oil lamps were the first sources of light. And they did two very important things. One, it allows you to work beyond this sunrise and sunset period. That's one. But the other thing is it allows you to use enclosed spaces. Imagine if you were in a cave, if you were living in a cave, you know, 10,000 years ago, Inside a cave, even in the day, you can't see unless there's some way of having light. And the oil lamp provided that light. So this is something which is very important. Of course, lamps were important but also because, because of the fire. It also provided you some protection from animals, but that's, that's a thing. Now, you know, we are used to seeing the simple dia, but believe me, 
almost you know around 3000 bc itself people had made fantastic versions of these diyas you can see the picture over here where what is the problem with the diya if i carry it around it's difficult to carry around because the oil will spill right so what they did is they made designs where it was covered there was a place for the wick to come out a separate hole to add the oil people made fantastic earthenware lamps okay so that's not something new at all the diya has been around for a very very long time okay let's go ahead now these lamps are made of clay okay clay uh you want just something go ahead check out the screen share what check out the screen share uh i i how does it look on youtube is it oh the screen should stop now fire clicker uh, it should be only camera no no we will we'll, we'll come to it one sec one sec we we'll, not yet not yet we'll do it when we do the experiments we will just hang on a sec we will do experiments my colleagues are telling me experiment experiment you're all very excited so am i but let's just tell you this so just remember that the um, the uh, this thing is made from clay now clay or mud is something which is available across the world it was very easy to get and what you did is you either pressed it with your hand but if you see some of the diyas they are actually made in uh, these if you see uh, some of these diyas which are more fancy like this uh, okay these are actually made by pressing it in a mold okay so this one this diya these are mold these diyas are probably the very simple ones they are made by hand these are made by hand all right so these diyas are made by hand some of them could be pressed in a mold these days uh, some of these which have some little flower design inside it things like this uh, can you shine your torch on this to see this this uh, yeah yeah you see these these things yes very good that one uh, this diya these are made by pressing them in a mold okay this one is the simple ones are probably made by hand and you get them in different sizes you can get get bigger ones you can get smaller ones they will hold different amounts of oil of course okay so now just remember that this is very different this is still fired earth earthenware terracotta whatever you call it when you make it with soft clay first you have to let it dry if you don't let it dry and you bake it immediately in a in you know in the fire or in the kiln or wherever it is it will just crack because the water will just you know boil and uh, it will just break the, the 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 material so first they have to let the diya dry then they actually fire it and you can fire it either in a proper kiln but in many small places you just do what is called pit firing you make a little pit put some wood or whatever can burn put your materials there cover it up burn it the main thing is this does not need to get very hot you need to go above 600 degrees or so that is where the you know water molecules in clay clay some some alumina silica with some water attached to it those waters start going away if you heat it too much though, if you go beyond 1050 or 1100 degrees what happens is it it starts what is called vitrifying it becomes glass okay and you will see that your your the cup in which you drink or the the basin at home right those things are what are called vitreous they are or the tiles in the house right they are they are smooth and shiny there the top surface has melted formed glass and become very smooth this is not heated so much to make glass and hence this is porous this is porous and uh, of course yes one thing why is it red the red is mostly iron oxide in fact sometimes the clays that are available don't have enough iron oxide then they come up with this thing called geru you must have heard of geru geru is nothing but a clay earth which has got lots of iron oxide and is red you can use it to paint you know flower pots and diyas and all that okay so i said this diya is porous so now it is time to do some experiments so i'm going to stop my uh, uh, screen share and we will go back to the camera and what we are going to do is we are going to do experiments so the first experiment we are going to do is uh, why don't you show them what we have here we have a uh, we have a, a balance uh it's not focused move up move up. yeah so we have why is it not focusing focus please we have a balance okay for some reason it doesn't want to focus on that uh and we have a beaker of water at least you can see the beaker of water i hope and we have lots of diyas with us so what we are going to do is we're going to weigh a diya we're going to put a diya on the weighing pan ah there now it is set the focus come on and what is the weight oops uh no no get it on the numbers 
Maybe you can see it from the side as well. No, I think the top view is actually better. Yeah, the top view is better. You can see the bubbles. Okay. All right, very good. Maybe we can take the first beer out. The first one, the lower one. Let's take it out. And uh, let's uh, just yeah, get some tissue paper. Let's let there be no excess water in it. We'll wipe it up. We'll wipe it. Wipe it, okay. Of course, some of the paint also comes out, but that's fine. Not the best, but ideally, you should just let it dry out. Okay, that's probably good. And now let's wait again. Aha. So it was earlier 45.3, if I'm uh, not mistaken, and now it is now it is 49.4. Hey, so we've almost got four grams, four grams. Increase in weight. That's the amount of water that the, the that went into the the beer. So we can now calculate approximately how much porous it was, right? You know this that much water went in, so there were lots of these fine pores. Let's see the other one. The, the other one is so the one which is pressed. Now remember, this was made in a mold. This usually has a smoother surface. Maybe it will not absorb that much water, but let's just check it out. We are drying it up. Drying it. So actually, you know, the weight should decrease because some of the paint is coming off. But because of the water that's gone in there, probably the weight will be more. That was how much was it before? Thirty. This is thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Okay. And how much is it now? Ah, it's around forty-four, forty-three point eight. So again, you see, this water has gone in. Water has gone in. That's because these diyas are porous. The clay is porous. It allows water to soak in. Okay, and this is why normally they tell you before you want to use the diya, you should um, soak it in water before you put oil in. Because otherwise, the first time you put oil in it, most of your oil, the first five grams of your oil, will just go in, uh, getting soaked inside the diya. And then what's going to happen below your diya? Actually, you will find you know that if you Pour oil in a new diya, you'll find after some time there's a layer of oil below the diya. It makes it very sticky and difficult to clean later. 
which is why they often tell you that when you get a diya soak it in water soak it in water first so that it's all the pores are already filled with water so when you pour in oil not much of of course the water will start drying out from outside and eventually the oil will come out but uh, at least it, it's doesn't make that much of a mess so that's why they told you that all right um uh, now about the sound now i don't know if you could hear the sound please do this at home please do this at home so take the you know you take your diya and you dip it in water and hear the sound you will hear these bubbles coming out you know the bubbles will come out you will hear these little streams of bubbles coming out and it will take about 1 to 2 minutes and if you hear it carefully initially a lot of bubbles are coming out going then slowly it's going to it's going to come down the rate of which and that's because these pores are slowly so initially there are lots of pores that are open all of them are getting filled with water and they're all bringing these bubbles out and every time a bubble comes out you're hearing this of the bubble coming out now once these pores start getting filled the number of empty pores is reducing so the frequency at which these bubbles are coming out is reducing and the you know you'll hear these pop 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 noises slowly sort of you know the the the, the, the time interval keeps increasing between them listen to this there's so much you can do just listening to a diya being put in water okay lovely uh okay so i'm going to go back to my screen share for us again um oops sorry oh uh, where is my yeah slide show and share the screen and uh, let me go here and okay but before before i get to the uh, get to more experiments with our little um, oil lamp um uh, you should probably uh, i want to talk about another very very beautiful diya now you know we have we have so many kinds of oil lamps in india we have so many kinds so many kinds but there is one special one that i'd like to talk about and that is this one it's the oil lamp from india which has a what is called a geographical indicator a gi tag which means that this oil lamp is associated with a particular place internationally like you know this is a very important thing to have a gi tag so this oil lamp which is a nachiar coil kutu vilakku the nachiar coil oil lamp this is these are these beautiful brass lamps you may have seen them in some inauguration ceremony or something right these have a gi tag and they come from this village called nachiar coil which is near kumbakonam now let me show you where on the map this is so this is south india this is tamil nadu uh, just sort of uh, a little bit north uh, west of tanjavur is a uh, let's zoom into this again so this is this is kumbakonam and uh, about i would say you know 5 10 kilometers from there is this place called nachiar coil where these lamps are made so now i want to ask you a question out of all these places right what is so special that this beautiful lamp industry comes in this very small place and remember this has been around for a long time right these so is it because there was a i mean coil of course is a temple so is it because there was a famous temple there is it because a local king or whoever was very supportive to these uh, people making lamps or was it that these artisans who were you know historically there they were very skilled people or is it because these are brass lamps is it because the sources of metals were were available somewhere close by so in the chat i'm going to give take a uh, just look at the chat and why don't you put in uh, what do you think is the reason that these beautiful lamps are getting manufactured in this place nachiar coil near kumbakonam okay and let's see if people are saying something on the chat uh, can you look at youtube i am looking at the the zoom chat nothing over here um uh okay um so any anything coming on the chat no no nothing source and artisan availability very good uh says survi now i want to give you a hint the hint is look at the map look that there is a river over here there is a river and you know there are actually all these small blues you can see there are also you know sort of you know there's water around here this river okay that's the hint the hint is river 
Anyone you guessing anything on YouTube? Uh, no. Somebody guesses metal availability. Well, actually, the answer, let me give it to you. This is a region where the Kaveri, traversing all through the South Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, etc., is coming close to the coast and is breaking up into distributaries. And you get very, very good sand out here which is good for molding. Remember, these, these brass pieces are made by molding. For molding, you need to make molds out of sand. You can either do wax molding or sand molding. They, I mean, the temperature of this sand molding is better for molten iron. And the quality of the sand from the Kaveri and its distributaries was very good in this place. The sand is what attracted people. The artisans actually came from Kerala. They came from places like Nagarkoil, etc. They came to this place because of the availability of sand. This is why, you know, science, geography, everything is all related. Okay, you can't delink it from, you know, what's going on in society everywhere. Uh, so uh, this is an example. Uh, let's go go on. Now the next thing, of course, is of, we need to we need to, uh, of course, light a dia. And uh, maybe let's just light a dia and uh, then we'll come to discussing the wick and the flame and uh, this kind of stuff. So um, um, let me stop share again. And uh, let's uh, focus this down on the table uh, where we will now um, light some dias. Uh, okay, I think we can get the propane lamp out of the way. We don't need this. Uh, we will, uh, yeah, uh, let's take one of, is this one of the wet ones? Yeah. It's a wet one. It's good. So the way you light a dia, of course, everybody's done it. We will put some oil. This is standard cooking oil uh, at home. And we have lots of different wicks. Should we just use a commercial wick for now? Yeah, yeah commercial. This is a commercial. These are commercial wicks. Okay. These are wicks. Wicks. Mm -hmm. wicks. Hand rolled, yeah. Right. They are, they are wicks. We have many kinds of wicks. We have hand rolled wicks. We have wicks which we have bought. Okay. And we're going to put a wick inside the, the dia. And if you watch closely, let's watch closely how the oops, how the wick is getting soaked in the oil. Now remember that it's getting soaked in the oil. The oil has to reach the tip because if I burn, if, if yeah, so that's what people do. They dip it and they probably put a drop of oil there to help the oil sort of climb up the tip. There we are. Okay. Uh, oh wait, not it's not. Uh, oh, okay, I think you're there. Yeah, good. All right, very nice. I think you should hold this because I'm, I'm, it's, it's, this thing is very loose. I think you need to tighten it. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 just, just tighten the prep first time. Okay, so there we are. Now, what are the components out here? What do we have? We have a, a dia, it has oil in it, it has a piece of cotton wick, and we have lit the flame at the tip of the wick. Okay, so now let's come to the wick. So obviously, we are going to burn the oil. But we don't want to just set fire to the whole oil, right? We're not setting fire to the oil completely. We're not, we're not setting fire to the, just, you know, take a bowl and put oil and just burn it. That would be a different thing. We want to be able to burn the oil in a controlled manner. We want to slowly, the oil must reach the place where it is getting burned and it must burn at an almost constant rate. That's what we want. And the simplest way you can do it is by using a wick. Okay. So the wick is very important. Um, and I'm going to share my screen again to tell you about the wick. So the idea in the wick, the principle is something called capillary action. And capillary action happens because liquids have something called surface tension, right? They like to stick to the, or, or you know, there are, there are, there are uh, I mean, uh, something like an oil or water. It tries, if you put it in a very narrow tube, it will try and climb up, it'll rise a little bit. And the, the narrower the tube, the more it rises. And these fibers have lots of very, very, very fine holes in them, or, you know, to which the oil can rise. Okay. Now, I don't know if you've seen a picture of uh, the fiber under a microscope, but here it is. Uh, there are a couple of questions. Oh, wait, one sec. Let me just, just let me do this and take the questions. So this is how, uh, how cotton, this is just normal cotton. This is how normal cotton looks in an electron microscope. The what you see below here, this little dashed line, this is 20 microns. So your hair, your hair is typically about 100 microns or 70 microns or something. So your hair is about five times as big. 
there are lots of very fine fibers with space between them so the oil can actually travel in these spaces okay that's why how this the the, the wicking action happens okay now let me go to the questions uh, are there questions on on zoom or uh, uh, the questions are on zoom the first question is why doesn't the oil burn all of a sudden once we lit the lamp and the second question is uh, why does the wick not burn very good very good question so why does the oil not burn all of a sudden that's because we used a wick now if you can we just go down to the see the flame now obviously if we had taken a match and lit the oil we could have burnt the oil if we had given enough heat oh wait let, let me stop screen share uh, let me stop screen share yeah so if we had of course taken a match and tried to burn the oil it would be difficult with a match because there is a lot of oil you need a lot of heat right the advantage with a match is you can burn a small amount of oil which is at the tip of the 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 uh, wick what the wick is getting burnt very slowly so if unfortunately it's difficult to see this on a on a webcam but uh, if you uh, uh, of course we can take out the wick later you take, you, you know what happens when the dia is is extinguished uh, so even you can see a can uh, the after a candle is burnt the wick is black the tip of the wick is black that's because yes the wick does burn the wick does burn but very slowly the oil which is coming is actually the fluid keeping it cold the oil is keeping the wick cool enough so that it's not going to burn only at the tip where the flame is is it getting hot enough to evaporate the oil is evaporating there and the vapor of the oil is what is burning okay so that is why the entire oil doesn't burn uh, you have to heat the oil to a certain temperature before it can catch fire the wick is not allowing the oil uh, you know the 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 temperature the tip of the wick is is okay to evaporate the oil and burn the rest of it is cool enough so here is it correct to say that the vapors burn and not the liquid oil itself the vapors are burning that's correct the vapors of the oil are burning not the liquid itself what was the second question the second why doesn't the wick burn uh yes yes the wick of course why doesn't the wick burn because the oil is keeping the wick cool the wick is most of the wick you know 90% of the wick is soaked in oil of course you can burn the wick which is what we will do in a little bit but just wait for that we we'll, we are we are coming to that okay uh let me let me uh go back here and okay that was the that was the the wick in an electron microscope come on uh, okay now remember what do you make a wick of i can make a wick of so many things so many things anything which has fine pores is good enough so why not use paper i can use a tissue paper to make a wick yes you can probably can you can even try making a wick out of tissue paper uh, here i'll just give tissue paper we can roll it up and most probably we'll be able to make a wick because tissue paper paper after all is the same it's cellulose the same thing as cotton right can you make a wick out of nylon can you make a wick out of polyester can you make a wick out of different fabrics please try remember that the wick must not it will get hot at the tip cotton doesn't melt very easily right nylon would melt before it can you know it, it has to be hot enough so here is a wick made of paper we'll try this let's take make another dia and we'll see if a paper wick works you can also try uh, to see if uh, um, okay while they make this so what happens if you make a wick out of nylon most likely the material would melt before it can get hot enough okay um you could probably try to use some other materials uh, but you have to be careful um, be be very careful when you do these experiments though. okay now we are going to be burning some we will we will try our paper wick first just to show you so here are uh, uh, people trying to let me stop share again uh, stop share okay uh, can you hold this properly i am unable to there you see that's our wick uh made of tissue paper the tissue paper wick the one with the the u shaped the circular one. this this is the tissue paper wick that's the original um cotton wick tissue paper wick works fine in fact the size of the wick will probably control how big the flame is and how long the air will burn for a given amount of oil because so if we take the wick out so we're going to just take the wick lift the wick up and take it out and you see the flame has sort of gotten a bit bigger 
because now there is more region and it's also a more sooty flame. It's putting out more, it's putting out more black soot. You can see the black soot as well. Okay, we'll come back to the, we'll come back to the, we can just hold another DI itself on top. Just hold the DI, you'll see this black soot on it. They can't see the DI and the video. Okay, see? Uh, yeah, there's black soot coming from it. Okay, so if you make the flame, the DI too long, you, you're going to get a lot of black, smoky flame coming from it. Okay, now people ask, why doesn't the wick burn? And of course, we tried to burn it. What's the, what's the fun otherwise? I mean, you're in TIFR, we should do fun stuff. So we tried to burn the wick. Um, and before I show you this, I should ob obviously, I think, uh, share my screen. because This is the fun part. Uh, okay, so what, what you will see is a video. What you will see is a video. I will play the video. On the left side is a typical, uh, where is that commercial packet of wicks? You can show them what we were burning. Uh, she just had it. Is. We kept it somewhere. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it's just a, a it's just a packet of of wicks, you know, that we we just bought this. Okay, this is wick, and the comparison is actually uh, what is called medical cotton, the cotton that you get, you know, when you when you get hurt and you're bleeding and you want to stop the bleeding, you put some cotton. That's the cotton. Okay, so we will uh, first. Uh, yeah, we can do it. Uh, or we can first let's just show you the video. We can see if we can do it. Just watch the video. So on one side is the wick being burnt. We are putting it in a flame, and the wick does burn. But see the ash left behind. You can see the ash left behind. The cotton almost disappears. The cotton there's very little ash that's produced. Okay, so maybe it's better to do it. Uh, can we do it in the dia itself, probably? <laughs> We'll do it in the air. We'll do it in the air. We'll do it in the air. Okay. Yeah. So stop share again. So this is cotton. and uh, this is yeah, wait, wait, one, one sec, one sec, one sec. We're gonna turn the thing. So uh -huh. okay. Um, natural cotton. So just just you, you can uh, I I let you see what's happening here. Yeah. So your head is chopped off. It's okay, it's not good. My head is uh, not okay. Uh, but are you able to hey, you are a flame work better? Flame work yes. better? Gas no, 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 gas is over. Oh, oh, okay. Oh. Just try and the, just okay. see if it works Fine. in the yeah, it work. So we're just going to burn some cotton. So we'll just burn some cotton. Few fibers. Okay. Uh, show the show the cotton to the camera first. Yeah, there's some cotton. And let's see what happens to it. This sooty thing. Sooty thing. It went off and it formed. It just formed a very small bit of ash. Yeah. A very small bit of ash. This is one, one medical cotton. One more time. Medical cotton. There it goes, and there's Oops. nothing left. There's almost no ash left in that. Try again. That's what cotton. No medical cotton. Medical cotton. Okay. Let's try uh, yeah, medical cotton. Let's try medical cotton again. Maybe you can take some more. Take some more because otherwise it's hardly going to give you any. Ash. No. Yeah, it's okay. Now let's look at uh, natural fibers. Natural cotton. You see, there's a little bit more. Uh, can you can you somehow focus, uh, remove move, move out of the dia because otherwise it's too bright. But can you just hold this and uh, focus on that somehow? Yeah, you can actually see there's a lump of ash over there. A little bit of ash. Okay, so the natural cotton produces a lot more ash than uh, medical cotton, and since a wick is made by compressing and rolling the way you make, you know, how do you make a wick? You take cotton and you roll it and make the wick. Uh, when you burn a wick, uh, take a wick, no? Yeah, sure no, no. How to make it. That's so, okay. You roll it. So we roll it. It gets compacted. Fibers will get compacted. Okay, so he's going to take a thing, make a wick. And this will also not burn so easily now. Let's see whether it burns. Yeah. So it's it. easy to burn cotton, you know, when it's fluffy. You can't take a you know a bale of cotton and suddenly burn it because why because the oxygen is not going to reach till inside and it's not going to get hot very easily but let's see what happens okay it's burning what at a steady rate it's burning Okay, and you can see the amount of ash. Now so we'll make medical wick. Wait, we'll make a okay. Medical cotton. We're gonna make a wick out of medical cotton. 
similar amount similar approximately amount. yeah uh, smells out here <laughs> yeah it's okay the cotton smells very bad medical cotton won't smell so let's see let's see how medical cotton is we'll make a wick out of medical cotton no i need to hold no, no, hold it to hold it to the freezer yeah so better hold it rather than getting burnt okay there we are burns faster burns with a longer flame see there's a difference in how it was burning the rate of burn is also much higher Uh, no, the tweezers are quenching the heat. Yeah, the tweezers, the metal tweezers. Also, it is more black and dense carbon rather than. The okay, so now, now you see the the ash. Just can you compare the ash? Just focus on the ash. Focus on the ash. Yeah, the 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 black one is the the gray one is the natural cotton, ashy and one, ash colored one, and this one, the black one. With this little white unburnt part where the the tweezer was held, that's the medical cotton. Much sort of smaller amount of ash as well. So what we did, we actually found this was okay, so uh, careful. 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 <laughs> now can we switch off the? Uh, let me. Okay. What we did, what we did was we actually went to the lab and we decided let's look at how this ash looks. Okay. Advantage of being in a place like uh, FR. Um, <clears throat> okay, is there anything on the chat? Uh, interesting. Okay, question and answer. Um, all right, great. There are some good questions coming in. We will take it uh, take it in a bit. Uh, let me just share the screen again. Okay. Uh, so what we did is we also looked at the. Okay, that's the video once again, and this is how the ash looks. This is the same size, same size uh, magnification. The ash from a sort of wick, which is made from sort of commercial cotton versus medical cotton, you see, it, it looks very different in, in the microscope. This is a different microscope. You're looking at 10 microns, so it's very, very zoomed in, but it looks different. What is more interesting is that the ash is chemically different. Okay. And if you look at it now, this is something, don't worry about what exactly it, this thing is, but in an electron microscope, we can also check what elements are there in something. Okay, how this happens, you can ask me later. The natural cotton, what is left behind is mostly potassium oxide, calcium oxide, right? The medical cotton, which is bleached, remember this is bleached cotton usually, you're left with a much smaller amount of ash and that is mostly silica, magnesium oxide, calcium oxide, etc. This potassium oxide is very small in this. So some of these things in the bleaching process, etc., they actually change the chemical constituents of the, the cotton itself. Okay, and uh, the, these uh, so what you're what you're left with in the ash is actually see the, these big things on the left side. These are all the carbon and all that stuff. Uh, you know, don't don't worry about uh, this. They'll always be carbon. Uh, but uh, uh, we were we were interested mostly in the metal oxides that were left behind. And you see, it's very different. One has so much of potassium. The other one has has silicon and, and calcium being, being the dominant ones. This is just some fun experiments that we did uh, to try and look at what is the ash actually and why is it different when you use uh, uh, different things. Okay, uh, let's move ahead. What are we going to burn? We need a fuel. Now, oil lamps, what do you expect to burn in an oil lamp? Well, oil, right? We will burn oil. Now, remember that while we use different... Uh, oils at home for cooking, etc. If you are, remember while we are cooking, we don't want to burn the oil. We are cooking the food, we don't want to burn the oil. There, there are very important differences between the burning, what is called the smoke point or the burning point of various oils. Oils have different fatty acids in them. But if you are burning it, it really doesn't matter very much whether it's 210 degrees or 240 degrees. It might be very important for cooking. These differences in the fatty acids may be very important for for uh, the uh, you know your health and you know whether it's got triglycerides and this that and the other. Now the most common, the most common like we use at sunflower oil, the typical component, the major components are fatty acids, and fatty acids come in two types. So there's one. Let me get the pointer again here so you can see it better. 
Okay, so there are what are called, you know, for example, in, in the center here, there's oleic acid. Oleic acid is called 18 carbons, 34 hydrogens. And see, these are fatty acids. If you, if you remember some chemistry on the right side here and on the left side here, you see a carbon with double bond O and an OH, the COOH, that's the carboxylic acid part. So that's the acid part of the thing. This long chain, these wherever you see these things, that's just a CH2, CH2, CH2 chain, right? These things are what give it the fatty part of it. And if you may have heard of, you know, in the bottle of oil you buy, they'll tell you things like MUFA and PUFA and things like this, polyunsaturated fatty acids. So oleic acid is a monounsaturated. That means there's only one double bond over here in this molecule. Okay. On the other hand, linoleic acid, this one, uh, this is, this has got, it's got two more places where there are, uh, there are, uh, there are double bonds. You'll also hear things, people telling you that, you know, this omega-6 acid, uh, omega-6 oils are better for you and you know something. So all this thing, it's just don't get something. It just tells you where is this double bond. If I start from this end, not the acid end, the other end, the methyl group end, it's a sixth carbon, which has a double bond. That's an omega-6 acid. Okay. It's very simple thing. Don't let people you know, say that uh, nothing, nothing big in this. Now, candles also burn and candles actually have, this is a typical wax also. There are many molecules in the wax, but typical molecule would be like C31. Okay. Now, what we can do is, do we have another dia we can make? Hmm. We can compare uh, what happens if we try and burn some very different fuel, say ethanol, alcohol. Okay. Um, you want to try with the sanitizer or just pure alcohol itself? Uh, we have ethanol. So no, no, I have, I have ethanol. We have got ethanol. We bought ethanol. So what we will do is we are going to do one more experiment. Um, it where will we burn, will it will burn very much. quickly. We have to be we put very little, put a long wick, yeah. put very little, put a long wick. Yeah. Be very careful when you're doing these experiments. Please don't do the experiment with alcohol at home. This yeah. is why hand sanitizer is extremely flammable. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, just take a very small amount. Uh, but the idea is, I want you to see that the flame, if we can see it, is going to be very... Let me focus it that's, before that's anything else. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. 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 Remember, you may have seen a spirit lamp in your lab also at some point. Okay. Let me just let go. Me let, me, let me stop screen share. Stop stop screen. Screen. Yeah. Okay. So there's our lamp with alcohol. And um, it's not so clear. Okay. We will carefully light the lamp. Yeah. Okay. Whole, now you see the whole dish of alcohol has got fire. The whole dish. But if you compare it with this, the flame is not very bright. The flame is bluish. It's very difficult to see on the camera. Uh, right now, the cotton is also starting to burn. But you can see that the 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 dia flame. Can you just look at it from that side, maybe? Where you can see both dia flame is is sort of almost white because it's it's. Uh, I think you can probably see a bluish shade if I hold a white paper behind it. Maybe you will. Well, you can see the bluish shade. You can see the bluish shade. You can see the bluish shade. White screen. No, it doesn't really work. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, here you can see. Uh, no, yeah. I think you're, you can see the bluish shade. You can see the bluish shade. Okay. Okay. So remember that these are very, very different. Now, why? And why do we get light? So the next question is, why does a dia flame give us light? Okay. Just cover it with something. Just yeah. Cover just, it. Just, just, just. Okay. We have extinguished that flame safely. And we will go back. Uh, okay, uh, so alcohol, ethanol is a very small molecule. It's just CH3, CH2, and an OH. Okay, this is alcohol, and these oils are big molecules with Every molecule has lots of carbon in it. Okay. Now, let's ask ourselves. Uh, why doesn't it work in this? How hot is it, and why does a why does an oil lamp give us light? Okay. And I'm again going to stop the screen share for now. Um, okay. Why does an oil lamp give us light? The alcohol flame was not so bright. In fact. Ethanol, you can see. Methanol, you probably would be much more difficult to see. Uh, we will also light a candle. So we have different flames out here. And uh, we will try first to see how hot the flame is. And also, uh, we will try and uh, first see why. It, first, let's answer why is it bright. 
Now remember, when we increased the wick length, it started giving black smoke. And this flame is very different than the you know cooking gas range flame, which is bluish, doesn't generate all the smoke. That's because there the fuel and the air are being mixed very nicely before burning. A dia flame or a candle flame is what is called a diffusion limited flame. Okay. Air has to, there is fuel coming, the wick is giving us fuel. Okay. And air is coming from the outside. It's not being pre-mixed. So there is a lot of incomplete combustion. Not all the, ideally, if you had something with carbon and hydrogen, hydrocarbons, they should burn up to give you carbon dioxide and water. That's it. Right. But the reason we have so much unburnt carbon is because these are big molecules, lots of carbon. There's not enough oxygen reaching there. Of course, if you made a fine spray of oil mixed with oxygen, you can get a very nice blue flame with it. Not a problem. Okay. But, but here there's lots of carbon soot particles. These soot particles are getting heated in the flame and they are glowing. And what is called incandescence of these hot soot particles, the soot particles are glowing. That is what makes the Dia flame give you light or a candle flame give you light. So you want these bulky things. If you have an alcohol lamp, a spirit lamp, it doesn't give you much light. Okay. Also, you have to be very careful. You saw how quickly it, 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 it catches fire. Okay. So uh, that's one thing. The other thing is, let's try and see how hot it is and where is it, how hot. If we can do it, what we have with us is a, uh, we have a, what is called a thermocouple, a thermocouple, oops, oops, please don't burn the wires. Uh, a thermocouple is something which, uh, well, there's a candle, which shows us the temperature right now. Can you see it? Please? Can yeah. you show us the thermocouple in the thing? It's just a, bring it in the field. Yeah. yeah. It's basically uh, two metals, this similar metals, which are connected together. And this is something, these metals are such that we can actually put it in the fire. Now we will try to measure. We don't, uh, it may or may not work. Let's try and see it. Let's hold it in the candle flame. Hold it okay. above the candle first. Okay. See, see the temperature is rising. See the temperature. Uh, you're, you're, you're far away. Tip from away, away. Tip you're far away. You look at the flame. You just look at the flame. Let the camera, the camera person. No, you look here. You, you just focus on getting it because you're, you're far away from the flame now. Okay. Uh, get the, get it, get it uh, more towards you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Somewhere there. Very good. Very good. You can see it's going up 360, 370. Uh, you can probably, uh, can you just for a second, uh, so, so focus on the, on the, on that thing showing that it's getting coated with black. Yeah. Can you see the tip of this? Uh, just can you, can you move this to show the tip here? Um, where is it? Ah, there, there, there. No, it's not in the field of view. Oh, wait, one second. I cannot see it. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you the That's it, yeah. Okay, so now now you're seeing the flame. You're not seeing the yeah uh, yeah. They, you can see it's become black at the tip. But let's put it in the flame. Okay, and let's wait for the temperature to stabilize. Water regions, I don't know. Uh, it's so small that you can't really do it. It's, it's going to be very difficult to do. But let's just see what we can get in this. Let's cross five hundred. Five sixty, move it a bit up, maybe. Yeah, yeah and that would you will get six hundred plus. Okay. Actually, much hotter, but problem is no, you can't get on this stomach up. All right, six hundred. I don't know. Yeah, go up a little bit, and you will get a little more than that. Nay, no, in the flame, just, just up, the, tip. the tip of just the, the tip. It's come down to. Less than 600. Okay, you can even see if the dia is any different, but you can the same, I think. Yeah. Okay, anyway. But why probably the suit once I'm done? Why probably the suit from the thing? It's 500 degrees, it's going to be red out and glowing actually. Yeah. You can try to put over here. But... Okay, now the, the, let me. Let it me. Is glowing. It is glowing. Yeah, it is glowing red. Tip. It's glowing. It's red hot. A red hot. Thing. The tip is red hot. Yes. Okay. Uh, I want to try it with the uh, oil lamp. We can try the oil lamp, put it in the oil lamp. Clean it up a bit. Take it down. Yeah, that's it. We can try the oil lamp also. Let's try. Hey, hey. 
Yeah, can you get this thing? No, get the oil lamp closer to this. Okay. Yeah, no, it's not in this. No, no, we are yeah. allowing it to cool. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. No, that's okay. It's no, 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 I'm just, yeah. yeah. Ah, except the the some digits. Some can, you the, can you hold it? Can you hold a readout? Of, yeah, I can hold it. Up, yeah. Well, up is difficult. It'll be out of the feet of your. You have to raise it. Okay, I'll I'll do it. Yeah. close to 500. Okay, why didn't we get very high numbers in this? Of course, you can see a lot of smoke coming out. Yeah. All right. Sooty flame. <clears throat> Sooty flame. Let's 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 uh, let's. Okay. Fine. Let's wind. Let's wind this experiment up, and we'll do something uh, else. Uh, okay, so you know what? We didn't really get the numbers that we thought we would get. And let me also just uh, share screen again. Uh, so people have actually measured this. That's the reason it's so difficult to measure is we have a big thermocouple made of metal. The moment I put it in, it's going to, the whole thing is getting hot, right? It's conducting the heat away. The flame is small, it doesn't have that much heat output. Uh, so actually, it's very difficult. But even then, we got almost 600 degrees uh, in this. So the, the metal is actually cooling the uh, thing down. But actually, a candle flame can be very hot, or a beer flame can be very hot. Uh, the the it, you know the, it could be almost thousand degrees um, in a in a flame. Now, as I was saying, the flame is very different from the uh, the typical uh, cooking gas stove flame because you have oil coming from the center air coming from the side okay and because of this the flame actually is is a is a ring it's like it's burning in in shells right and uh, we can we can actually see this so let's try and uh, show you that okay so what we will do is we will use something to cut the flame at different heights now how do you cut a flame you cut a flame with a very important piece of equipment this it's called a tea strainer for heaven's sake, if you're doing it at home, do not use the plastic or nylon tea strainer. You will not strain tea with it after that. You will have a nice fire. Please use only a metal tea strainer. If you want to do this experiment, use a metal tea strainer only. You have been warned. Okay. So now what we will do is we will use this. Um, so maybe I'll give you the monitor again. So you can. I want another. Another small flame to show the upper part. Ah, uh, okay. We will. Uh, we do. We do the match. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fine. So we are going to do this with the candle. It's the easiest one. It's the flame is slightly larger. You can also do it with the tea. Not a problem. Uh, but look at this. this look. Look. Flame. First, look how this. Once we cut it, there's a lot of black smoke coming from the top. The soot is coming from the top. Okay. Remove it. Okay. Now, now we're going to see whether the flame, when you go close to the wick. You have to come from a little higher angle because otherwise you won't see. Ah, do you see it's like a hollow thing? A ring of fire. Do you see a ring? You see a ring because near the wick, ups, you've pushed it hopefully off. Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, let's light it again. Okay. Near the wick, that's where the that's where the uh, wax is evaporating and it's the oxygen is still not reaching there, it's not burning. See the place where the, the hole is. Okay, now this wax is actually coming out from the top. The, the evaporated wax is coming out from the top. And if you are smart, you could even burn the wax on top of the thing. Can we try that? Yeah. Okay, take, take a new match if you want. Yeah, okay. I have to dip it. Yeah. Oh, you dipped it. Okay. You made a mashal out of it. Yeah. Okay, very good. Now, ah, can you see? See this, see this. There's, there is stuff burning. Ah, do you see the, can you see the thing burning on top? Move it out. It's burning. There it is. You see? The wax vapors are burning. Uh, don't burn your hand. Yeah. Did you see that? No, don't do it. Do it we'll, do it we'll do it once more. We'll do it once more. Yeah. Uh, we can have lots of mastics, not a problem. Uh, so what we will do is we will cut the flame at a level where there is still unburned wax going That's through. It. Thank you. Thank you. Unburned wax going through, and we will light the wax on top of the the uh, tea strainer. Okay. There we go. There. Can you see it? There. It's burning on top. Yeah. 
you might even be able to burn the whole stream yeah i can do that i can do that you want to do that mm. burn the whole stream no it's okay let it be yeah you can see the jumping plane you could anyway and you can do the same thing with the i'm sure you can do it with the dia as yeah. well yeah, uh, yeah it's yeah, going to be very it, similar yeah, yeah. Well, except uh, that except that Oh, the other becomes so black. Yeah, yeah. we don't do it the other way around, but we'll try. We'll show you on the DR as well. Uh, let's make a bigger flame by moving the the uh, DR. And by the way, our paper wick is still doing fine. That's the that's the this is the one with the paper wick, and you can see it's still burning, and the paper hasn't fully burned. So as long as you have a porous material, you can make a wick out of it. Burn rate of that paper will be much faster. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Let's. That's okay. No, no. Usko is insert no. Upper it. Upper edge. Upper edge. Upper edge. Upper edge. All right. Now we have a reasonably big flame from the yeah. thing. And look at it from but the top. You can see the suit. You can see the suit and you can see the hollow. You can see the hollow in a bit. Yeah. There you are. There you are. You can see it's hollow. Okay. So even a DR flame is very similar. In the center, the black part. The black part is where there is only oil vapor. It's not burning. The glowing part is where the the combustion is happening. Okay. All right. Good. I hope people are enjoying this. Um. Uh, okay. Let's see what else we have. How do we have any questions? Are there questions coming in? Okay. The incomplete combustion question. Are there questions on the chat? Uh. Ah, a very good question. Why are we 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 showed you uh, we showed you oil and alcohol. We didn't show you ghee. I mean, yeah, TFR me ghee khareedne jaun na, to thoda mushkil rehega. Funding nahi hai ghee ke liye. No, no, no. That's a joke. Uh, no. Uh, well, ghee is similar, similar, a very similar. similar fat. Ghee, butter, you know, all these things you can use, melt and use in a dia. They all burn. They will burn. Whether it is mustard oil, coconut oil, sunflower oil, ghee, they will all burn in a very, very similar way. Okay, the flames are almost the same for all these things. So not a big difference between them. Uh, okay, uh, please keep putting your your questions uh, in the uh, chat or uh, whatever comments window. And uh, I'm going to then. Oh wow, it's almost twelve o'clock. Well, we'll do a, one at least another. Uh, let me see. Where do I get to share screen? Share screen. Yes. All right. So we've we've shown you some some uh, experiments for sure. Now it's time to have some fun. And uh, just wait. Just wait. 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 So you know, uh, Diwali me everybody these days says uh, you know, fataka mat jalao, don't burst crackers, all that. Then the government came up with this thing called green fireworks, whatever they are called, green fireworks. Okay, apparently it doesn't have barium nitrate in it. That's why it's green. Um, now, honestly, the amount of fireworks people burn—if you burn a five thousand wala pata 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 thing, or you know, you launch some twenty rockets or something—as uh, long as you've got anything like you know gunpowder, same thing, which is going to have sulfur, charcoal, potassium nitrate, things like this, chlorates, etc. You will. There is nothing that is environmentally friendly. Honestly, there is nothing that is environmentally friendly. But we have a special green firework. Can you get the big green fireworks? We have some green fireworks with us. Green fireworks. They're really green fireworks. And our green fireworks is this. Stop sharing. Okay. It's an orange. Okay. So now I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. So an orange. Firework? Yes. Firework. Beautiful. Beautiful fireworks. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. So what we're going to do? Let's turn this around to Suryan Uncle. Suryan Uncle, where are you? Uh, just keep it there. For now. Just keep it there. Tilt it up. Tilt it up. Yeah, there is Suryan Uncle. Uh, wait, 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 wait. We've lost a microphone. Just a second. Just a second. Okay, fine. It's on live. There was a loose contact. No. Let me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I hope the audience can hear us. Uh, all right. So um, 
Wait, camera went off. You by mistake. Camera is gone off. All right. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you for pointing out that the camera had gone off. I'm just uh, yeah. I'm just there was a of breaking a green firewall. Okay. So what you do is you take an orange. Now we are interested not in the orange fruit that you must eat. Good for health. We are going to be interested in the skin of an orange. So we are going to take the peel of an orange. Peel of an orange. And we will cut it. Uh, we are just using a knife, so it's easier to remove it. You can also do it with your finger, but the knife makes it easier to get nice big peels, which will help me out of a squirt. Uh, should we do it in dia? We'll do it in a lamp. In dia. Dia. We'll do it in dia. We'll so dia in session. Dia session. So we'll do it. So we'll do it in the dia. Candle from there. So then we can remove the candle. So what we're going to do is we've just taken some peels. We have this if we need. To. We have a. So we have um, peeled an orange. And these what? peels, uh, basically, you know, I'm sure जब छोटे थे आपने किसी के आँख में डाला है ना जलता है ना जलता है exactly जलता है and now let's see what happens in the candle flame in the dia flame oh there so Arna let's do it with four hands yeah we do it together चल आ जाओ okay watch this thing you want to go from the oil shade okay yeah, yeah. yeah. okay okay one two three woo do you see that Shall we do this again? Yeah. Same thing. I think yeah, yeah, same. This can work. A little bit further away from me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So one, one, two, three. It okay. smells beautiful. So it doesn't give you any harm. Doesn't do any so harm. So basically, what's happening is we are taking a. So the beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So when you when you press it, press it. Yeah. Uh, Did you see the aerosol? Maybe we we'll try this piece. No, this no, is. It's okay. It's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it here. Yeah. yeah. Could you see it? To, it's you can see it with your eye. Yeah. You can just take a take this. Just try with this. Maybe you'll see the you can see the spray that comes off, right? I think it's very difficult for the webcam to capture this. But this yeah. spray, just spray this in the fire. Just uh, that's probably gone. Let's copy. This. There we are. So you can take this the peel and just. Spray it in the fire. You will get a little fireball that you get. Okay, so uh, that is our little Diwali firework for you as well. So I hope you liked it. This is a very safe experiment you can do at home, uh, no problem. And uh, do eat the orange after that uh, uh, as well. Okay, so um, I think uh, yep, it is. Before we end, I definitely I should uh, share my screen so I can tell you the. Um, Tell you the upcoming programs. Uh, what's going on? All right, what's coming up? Lots of exciting things coming up. First thing, remember, Chai and Y happens on the first, third, and if a month has a fifth, the fifth Sunday. So the odd Sundays are Chai and Y. We are starting something new at HBCSE. As some of you probably know, I'm also associated with HBCSE these days. And there, we're going to bring you some more fun stuff on the even, the second Sunday. Okay. So there is a new series, the Steamboat. The Steamboat is getting launched. Steam, obviously, is science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Okay. So the Steamboat is going to cover lots of fun topics in the sciences, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And this series starts. This series starts on uh, uh, Sunday, next Sunday, September fourteenth, Children's Day. That's when we are starting it. And this is going to be. We are going to have Suravi, who's going to talk about super spiders who make super silk. So if you're interested in Spider-Man and swinging from buildings, and if that's a possibility, what is a spider doing? What does spider silk do? Tune in next Sunday for Steamboat. We will uh, announce this. You can check up HPCC Steamboat, or we will we will send this out anyway. Our next Chai and Y session is two weeks from now, the third Sunday of November, November twenty-first, and that's going to be on a very interesting topic of birds and bird watching. Now, many times we, you know, see a bird sitting outside, and we wonder, what is that bird? It's something. Uh, is it? Is it a sparrow? No, it's something bigger than a sparrow. Smaller than a sparrow. Is it bigger than a crow? No, it's not bigger than a crow. So, how do you, how do you, when you see a bird, how do you figure out what bird it is? How do you watch birds? That's going to be our coming up 
two weeks from now, we can have Aditi again from HBCSE who's going to be doing this giant Y session. So from now on, actually, we're going to have sessions almost something interesting from the world of science almost every Sunday. Stay tuned. Lots of fun coming up. And so uh, happy Diwali again to all of you. And please try this. What you see on your screen is a picture of you know many people doing this uh, little squirting orange peels into the uh, flame of a dia or a candle. Uh, it's pretty safe, very small amount of, uh, why does this happen? Let, let's ask people, why does this happen? What is there in the orange that's actually causing this uh, little fireworks to happen? Uh, put in your answers in the chat, put your questions in, I'll stop sharing and we'll take questions. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's go back and see what questions there are in the chat and in the Q&A. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so uh, one question which might be, has been uh, answered, but let's it might be interesting. The people, uh, one standard question is in a dia or a candle or whatever, why doesn't the wick burn very quickly? Okay, the wick does burn. So let's here is our paper, uh, our paper wick. I'm going to hold the paper wick in front of the camera. Um, you can see the drop of oil also at the tip. You can see it's part of the wick has burned. It's black. The rest of it hasn't burned. Okay, so the wick does burn, but very slowly. Why? Because most of the wick is soaking in oil. The temperature there is too low for the oil to burn. These oils will have to be heated to at least 200 degrees before they burn. This is the flash point, which is why, remember when we lit the lamp with alcohol in it, the whole, all the, the, the lamp, the alcohol inside the dia also, we put very little, but even that caught fire immediately. Those things have a very low, what is called a flash point. They will burn very easily. Okay. But uh, oil requires enough temperature to burn it and it, it doesn't reach the temperature. So, it, and it's soaked, so it's, it's cooling the, the thing as well. So it's uh, below the point where it can burn. Okay, um, what are the questions do we have here? Um, why does a wick not burn? Uh, feel like ghee, of course, it's pretty much the same. Um, how does the temperature increased? I don't know which temperature increased. Um, well, uh, we can, we can, yeah, maybe you're asking about the different regions of the flame. So you have a flame, which is like this. Uh, typically what happens inside, right where the wick is, that's where the oil is just evaporated. So it's not going to be very hot there. The place where it's going to be very hot is where combustion is complete, where you can get lots of air, which is at the edges of the flame. So the edges and the top, just at the top, that's where it is the hottest. The part which is glowing brightly is actually somewhere not that hot. I mean, it's hotter than the place where the oil is evaporating, but not as hot as this. You might sometimes see a blue edge, the blue edge of the fire or just below where the air is coming. That is where there is complete combustion. Those are the hottest regions. And the, this just above the, the, the flame. And the core, the main part of the flame, which is yellowish and glowing, is glowing because of carbon particles. It's glowing because of the carbon particles in the flame. That's why it's glowing. OK. Uh, let me uh, see. Are there uh, questions on YouTube? No, ah, there are questions on YouTube. Uh, OK, there are some questions on uh, YouTube. Uh, OK. Can we burn a dia with water? Well, you need something that is flammable. Unfortunately, water is not flammable very easily unless you can, you know, break up the water into hydrogen and oxygen. But for that, you have to get to temperatures which are way above any fire temperature. So water is not flammable. Uh, so you cannot burn a dia with water. Uh, let me go up and see if there are other other uh, uh, questions. Uh, Okay, Abhinav asks a beautiful question. How do the forces of cohesion, adhesion, and capillarity act in an oil lamp in the, in the wicking part? This is very, very good because, and this is why, you know, you have different wicks. Some of them are, are going to pull oil faster than other, other, uh, other wicks. Remember, it all depends on whether the molecules of your fuel, in this case, oil, are going to want to stick to these fibers and go or, or go in the pores between the fibers and go up. Right now, if if you had in the worst case a liquid like mercury, which doesn't like to stick to any other thing, it forms its own ball, very high surface. It would never it would never climb up a wick, right? On the other hand, things like 
alcohol or something the loreal will very easily flow through you have things which you you can have depending on your fiber your fiber may be things which like water or things which don't like water if it doesn't like water if it's it's repellent something it might like oil if it likes oil the oil will be happier to flow around so it all depends on what is the nature of the fiber what are the sizes of these gaps between the the fibers the pores that are there uh, uh, which decides how quickly the oil can go up uh, what's the difference between the smoke point and the burning point very good now if you have made any any in the kitchen you might have seen what happens when a oil is heated when a oil is heated after a point the oil is not burning but the oil starts to you can see some whitish smoke coming out that's the smoke point at the smoke point what is happening some of these fatty acid molecules are getting broken up into smaller molecules which are then evaporating out smoke point so some some oils have very low smoke point you can't use them for deep frying for example we need a very hot thing um some oils have a slightly higher smoke point the burning point is where it will catch fire smoke point is starting to smoke but it's not catching fire okay uh okay why does a flame burn upwards only that's because uh, when you burn when the oil burns the oil plus the oxygen around creates carbon dioxide water vapor whatever these gases are hot hot gases are light and hence they are going upwards okay uh can we fire a diya from water i mean can we put water in a diya and fire it no it won't can you light a diya under water no you need oxygen from the air um okay uh, what causes sparks of flame in uh, chakri and anar okay that's a slightly different thing i will come to it i will come to it uh, let me just see if there are any other questions so that was on, on on youtube let me just go back to zoom and check if there are questions on zoom Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, there are questions on Zoom. Uh, okay, the explanation of the orange peel experiment. Okay, so it's not. Remember, it's not orange juice. It's not you know citric acid. None of this stuff. The orange peel has oils in it. Okay, it has mo oily molecules there, right? And also, it has some very fragrant molecules in it. It has the oil. Oil, of course, burns. And when you when you squeeze it what you're doing is you're you're damaging the cells you're breaking the cells and they squirt these little you know very very fine droplets of oil now oil burns and anything in which is very fine burns very fast right so the combination of this you are spraying a very finely divided you know combustible thing into the fire it quickly just burns and that's what gives you this little fireball okay and uh, yes you can try this with mosambi you can try this with with the lemon um tough mosambi sometimes works uh, also if you keep the fruit out too long and you dry it up it won't work very well but most citrus fruits which have an oily or a waxy coating uh, they will uh, give you this uh, this kind of effect uh arush is asking why does incomplete combustion take place when the portion of the wick outside the oil is too long isn't the combustible material exposed to more oxygen excellent question excellent question arush okay you have the same question in the chat uh uh okay so what is happening let's 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 try and answer this remember that you are when the when the wick was small right the edge of the diya you, 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 the, the wick is is poking out of the edge of the diya right the edge of the diya is cold it's cold because you know i mean so there's only a very small amount that is hot where there is some rate of evaporation and it's burning now if i take the wick out uh, there is a lot more hot wick not burning as yet but hot wick that is generating the vapor the vapor is getting sent at a higher rate flame is a little larger vapor is getting sent at a higher rate but it's not still remember it's not forced we are not mixing it with oxygen here oxygen is coming only by diffusion these are diffusion limited flames if there was a way to blow and if if you've seen a, a in the good old days a goldsmith used to take a pipe and blow the flame give extra air to it right then you can definitely make it make it burn much better but as long as you're limited by diffusion it's easy to increase the rate of oil the rate of oil going in goes up 
but not all that oil gets oxygen to burn so it's going to give you a lot of lot of carbon that's 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 what's happening okay let's go to the q a um uh as the oil in the dr is sustainable silo is asking a question and petrol is less sustainable can we use oil instead of petrol in vehicles very good question uh, there is there is something called biodiesel you may have heard of and people have tried to blend vegetable oils in in uh, with petrol etc see if you cannot uh, remember the the even if you look at diesel versus petrol right diesel is has to often be heated to be heated because it's not it doesn't flow petrol is is very small molecular weight it's octane c8 basically mostly um, uh, c8 c9 uh, carbon atoms the oils have you saw c18 so they're much larger molecules in a standard internal combustion engine of a car right a typical car engine where you have a fuel air mixture a spark plug goes off ignites the mixture something you have to have you can't just use the same oil you have to do something to it you could probably use small amounts of it but not much so they they you can blend a little bit of alcohol perhaps but not 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 oil you could use oil in engines like diesel engines where you don't have a spark plug it's it's the combustion mechanism is slightly different you pressurize it and it, it then burns so these are larger molecules you, people have mixed uh these uh oil like things but it's better to actually make what are called bio diesels uh, which are more similar to diesel so you don't have to change the engine you could burn the soil you have to just change your engine completely to burn the soil that's that's the, the okay did you have uh, was there another question uh okay uh how is hydrogen used as a fuel well hydrogen hydrogen burns uh not not out here out these are hydrocarbons these are hydrocarbons They have carbon and hydrogen combined together in the molecule, and they burn to give us carbon dioxide and water. Hydrogen by itself is used as a fuel, yes, of course. Uh, and the, the dream is, of course, that you can use sunlight to break up, uh, make you know somehow break up water into hydrogen and oxygen, and you burn it. It again gives you water as a byproduct. Very clean, very clean. Uh, the problem with hydrogen is uh, it's difficult to store hydrogen. it's difficult to compress it and you know store it uh, the advantage of liquid fuels petrol etc the reason the car is not going away very soon is it's very easy to you know you can take a tanker and have petrol being delivered to you in somewhere in whether it is kashmir or arunachal pradesh or everywhere you, you have you know liquid fuels are easy to transport and distribute gaseous fuels are not that easy to transport and hydrogen especially you have to really pressurize it a lot uh, before you can store enough volume of it there are some materials in which they can absorb the hydrogen they are trying those things now uh, but also you would have to redesign your engine to burn hydrogen so uh, but yes hydrogen is probably the way to go it will not be the typical burning with you know the way hydrogen plus oxygen burns but it will be more of something called a fuel cell that will be used most likely uh, that's the answer uh, okay any there are a few more uh it's a gas it must flow out of the storage tank for it. yeah no no so 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 uh, uh, silo we can ask, answer these questions later feel free to send us an email uh, remember that diffusion is usually when something is spreading out at the same pressure when you have a gas in a tank which is at 200 atmosphere and it is moving out that's not diffusion that's like the pressure is what is driving the flow if so that's a very different very different process Okay, so uh, let's go back to YouTube and see if there are any questions there. Uh, let me go down. Uh, no, there don't seem to be questions on YouTube. Um, uh, yeah, thanks that you found the orange peel firework. Oh yes, we didn't say we said we'll take this later. What causes of sparks of flame in, in firecrackers like chakris and anars? Those are hot metal particles. They are just hot metal particles which are glowing. If you put, uh, if you put uh, iron particles of uh, iron filings uh, you will get yellowish sparks and the electric sparklers which have given white white sparks those have aluminum powder so if you put different metal powders the powders get hot and they burn and uh, that is what is the glowing metal powder is burning is what is giving you this or uh, hot metal particles themselves are what is giving you the glow uh, that is the anar and the chakri uh, we did do some sessions on firework chemistry a few years back but uh, this year it's the dia okay how uh, fuel additives uh, react with fuel to make it more efficient or environmental friendly uh, do these additives have effect on the flame uh, 
Well, in a dia, I don't think we are putting any fuel additives. Uh, so I don't know what the question is. If it's engines and fuel additives, uh, those I think are, are, are you know, it's something not something which I really know much about. Uh, you know, long time back, they used to add lead compounds, which were just terrible for the, you know, for health and the environment. They've thankfully stopped it right now. Uh, uh, so some fuel additives would help the, the fuel burn easier. Uh, but uh, I don't know what other additives are added. Maybe you can add something to keep the engine clean and things like this. But uh, I, I really don't know about this. So it's not top of my experience. Okay, so I do not see uh, questions on YouTube or on the Zoom. Uh, no answer. Uh, okay. I think we have answered all the questions here. So uh, yeah, thank you all for watching then. Uh, it's all, oh yeah, we are past time. Uh, just reminding you, next Sunday, Steamboat at HPCSE is gonna be doing spider silk. And two weeks from now, Chai and Wai is gonna be doing bird watching. So see you then, stay safe and have a good day.